Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art, and I am going to do a little reading of our book, Poison Power. Uh, what's the subtitle? The Case Against Nuclear Power Plants, which nobody really listened to, I guess. Um, that's because they're war profiteers. So uh, let me continue with this. We are on page 56, and we are on section E, whole body radiation versus partial body radiation. Obviously, irradiation of the entire body with any number of rads is more serious than irradiation of a particular part, some organ, for example. It is not easy to state flatly whether irradiation of one specific part of the body is worse than irradiation of some other specific part. In the case of the male and female reproductive organs, However, the damage is done during reproductive years guarantees great harm. Let me repeat that sentence. That's very important. In the case of the ma male and female reproductive organs, however, the damage done during reproductive years guarantees great harm. Since the gene-containing cells for future generations of humans resides in these organs, Irradiation here will cause the genetic, quote, inherited, unquote, alterations, which can produce mental and physical deformities and a host of serious diseases in future generations. And since genetic injury is the most serious injury produced by radiation, it is true that irradiation of ovaries and testes is almost as serious as irradiation of the whole body, which of course includes the ovaries and testes. For all the remaining organs, in adults at least, cancer is a major hazard and is almost certainly due in a specific organ to irradiation by that organ. At first thought, it might appear that the organs could be ranked by weight and determine the seriousness of irradi irradiation for cancer induction. The cancer risk for any specified amount of, of radiation appears more than related to the spontaneous cancer risk for that organ than to its size. Let me repeat that. The cancer risk for any specific amount of radiation appears more than, more than related to the spontaneous cancer risk for that organ than to its size. As we have seen, in most cancer-induced cancer by radiation, the radiation directly affects the cells which may become cancerous later. However, from certain animal studies, it appears that radiation in one part of the body can result in a lymph cancer developing elsewhere. Uh, this is from a study called Radiation Injury Effects Principles and Perspectives by Arthur C. Upton, uh, Chapter 3, Radiation Carcinogenesis, page 70, University of Chicago Press, 1969, Chicago, Illinois. This is not common. However, from certain animal studies, it appears that radiation in one part of the body can result in a lymph cancer developing elsewhere. This is not common. F. Age, an important factor. No factor is of greater importance in considering the implications of delivery of radiation to humans than is age. Direct evidence has been provided by Dr. Alice Stewart of Oxford, England. Let's remember that name, Dr. Alice Stewart of Oxford, England, that developing embryos are vastly more sensitive to the cancer and leukemia-producing effects of radiation than are adults. In fact, a given amount of radiation increases the risk of future cancer or leukemia 50 times more if delivered to the embryo during gestation than if delivered to adults. During next to the sensitivity of the fetus in utero are children, then come adults. Unfortunately, even the sensitivity of adults to cancer produce, production by radiation is 10 to 30 times more than the expert bodies of scientists thought up until the last few years. Let me read that again. 
Unfortunately, even the sensitivity of adults to cancer production by radiation is 10 to 30 times more than the expert bodies of scientists thought up until the last few years. The embryo represents other special problems too. Radiation received at a time when the various organs are being formed can cause a whole organ system to be deformed. For example, early radiation can lead to serious brain injury with resultant mental infirmities. This was seen in Hiroshima. Eesh. Look at this disgusting picture. I'm having to look outside of it. Check out that. Ugh. What does that say? This is the hand of a physician. Oh, my God. This is the hand of a physician who was exposed to repeated small doses of X-ray radiation for 15 years. The skin cancer appeared several years after his work with X-rays had ceased. Cancer incidence depends on radiation dose. That is really revolting. Well, i got to cover that up. Both from the point of view of injuring whole organ systems during pregnancy and that of producing massive increases in the risk of future cancer and leukemia, irradiation in early in pregnancy is an extremely serious matter. This would be true for any source of radiation, medical x-rays, nuclear electricity, or other activities. Since a woman does not often realize she is pregnant during these critical early stages, it is extremely unwise for women of childbearing years to be associated in any way with the nuclear power industry or other activities where the chance of radiation exposure is high. G. Other radiations. Alpha particles. Hot particles. Plutonium. For the broad group of hundreds of radioactive elements produced in nuclear fission, the radiations are beta particles, X-rays, or gamma rays, or various combinations. For all these, we can focus our attention on the number of rads absorbed by, ra by irradiated tissue or organs. This simplification helps. But one type of radioactivity associated with nuclear electricity deserves special consideration, alpha radioactivity. Alpha particles, electrically charged nuclei with helium atoms, affect material, including human tissues, in their path so extensively that they travel only short distances before they have expanded all their energy. In the process, they provide intense radiation to the tissue in their path. What is more, it appears that for some biological effect, including cancer production, alpha particles are worse per rad absorbed in tissue than any of the radiations discussed above, possibly several times worse. Oops, let me put that down a little bit. Much confusion has been generated by so-called authorities in the AEC, which is now the NRC, concerning alpha particle radiation. These, quote, authorities have stated repeatedly that since alpha particles transfer so much of their energy in a short distance and then are stopped, it follows that alpha particles are not serious. That's what they're telling us about Fukushima right now, as a matter of fact. This assumption is false. It is true that a radionuclide emitting alpha particles lodged on the skin cannot irradiate internal it tissues, simply because no alpha particles can get deeper than the skin. But they can provoke skin cancer. Much worse is the inhalation of nuclides which emit alpha particles. Once inhaled, the radionuclide can be distributed along the lining of the respiratory tract and there irradiate those cells especially prone to develop cancer. Indeed, this is the source of lung cancer induced by radioactive exposure of uranium miners, one of the truly unnecessary tragedies that has already occurred in the nuclear electricity industry. And you know what? We've actually seen that story in the in the news in the last few weeks. They really have no idea how much uh, uranium mining causes harm to the miners. 
they're completely lying. We know exactly what it is. Hot particles are very small dust-like particles that are made up of alpha-emitting substances. One of the prominent ones, plutonium-239, is widely heralded as the nuclear fuel of the future. Fine particles of pure plutonium-239 oxide formed when plutonium burns are very intense sources of alpha particles. Giesemann and Tamplin have shown that such fine particles, referred to as hot particles because of their extremely high alpha particle emission in the localized region, may be 10 to 1,000 times more effective in producing cancer than it would be expected if the same number of rads were delivered in a more diffuse manner to an organ, such as the lung. It is this hot particle problem associated with plutonium-239 that makes the contemplated future widespread use of this radionuclide as a fuel in the nuclear electricity generation plants such an unmitigated nightmare for mankind. Not only may the hot particles of plutonium oxide be super cancer producers, but with a half-life for plutonium-239 of 24,000 years, such plutonium oxide can spread throughout the earth, resuspended in air, and producing lung cancers in generations of humans for hundreds to 200,000 years. Manufacture of plutonium-239 and its widespread use in electric nuclear power may represent man's most immoral act. Let me repeat that one. That one's actually a very important sentence. Manufacture of plutonium-239 and its widespread use in nuclear electric power may represent man's most immoral act. Aside from the alpha-emitting radionuclides and the hot particle problem, the vast majority of other radionuclides can be considered to have equivalent effects, provided one considers simply the rads delivered to the particular tissue. These points are stressed because so much confusion has been generated in the public's mind concerning possible special importance of one or other particular radionuclide. The question is commonly asked, which radionuclide associated with nuclear electricity generation is to be most feared? Aside from the special case of plutonium and the hot particle problem, the answer is any or all the radionuclides in direct proportion to the radiation they deliver to the particular organ. Important differences in their chemical behavior can determine how and if they will wend their way through the food chain to man. If the radionuclide gets to deliver its radiation to man's tissue, only the rads delivered count in assessing hazard. In addition to the rad unit, it has proved convenient to use the unit 1,000 times smaller, known as the millirad. A thousand millirads equal one rad. You may commonly encounter both the rad and millirad in public discussions of radio hazard. Thus, for example, the Federal Radiation Council allows Americans to receive an average dose of 0.17 rads per year. This can also be stated as 170 millirads per year. Both will frequently be referred to in public writings and discussions. Two other units that may be encountered are the REM and the ROTAGEN, ROTAGEN, for almost all purposes involving beta rays, x-rays, and gamma rays, and thus encompasses all the fission products from uranium, we can say that the RAD, the REM, and the rotogen are roughly equivalent. We shall use only the rad or the millirad in this book. Should the reader encounter radiation hazards discussed elsewhere in units of rams or rotogens, there will be no significant error in considering these units to be the same as rads. And that, my friends, is the end of chapter two.
Uh, chapter 3 will be How Radiation Produces Disease and Hereditary Alterations. We're on page 62. So thank you for listening to this reading. Um, I hope you're able to digest it and put it into our minds and thoughts. It's imperative that we learn about radiation and understand how it affects us. Um, we are the defense against the nuclear murderers. They have known this for over 40, 50, 60 years and have just proceeded ahead to the point now where the entire northern hemisphere is threatened by nuclear radiation, plutonium-239. And it is beyond conscionable. It is the most immoral act. So put your courage feet on, folks, because we're going to be the tsunami that pushes over the nuclear power plants and shuts them down and closes the nuclear industry. Ciao, you guys. Put your courage feet on. Bye.